My fingers are crossed for clear skies here. The weather predictions are starting to break up a little. There, there are some predictions for sun, some predictions for clouds. I'm, I'm, no, I'm extremely nervous. I'm kind of in shock, I have to say. When I get out of shock, I get very excited. We're less than 24 hours before this total solar eclipse, and we've been thinking about this for six years. Everything's out of our hands at this point. The skies need to be clear. All of our volunteers need to sort of do their part, and then, you know, everything that we've worked on will just sort of happen. If you think about it, we're all scientists. We all have information. We all have the skills, the abilities to do these things. It's just not tapped into until now in these initiatives. On August 21st, 2017, something really cool is happening. So there's always this phrase, you know, think globally, act local, right? Citizen science is like the epitome of that within science. We're making a film from thousands of pictures taken by citizen scientists, and we need your help. I knew about the cloud, I used the cloud on my phone, but didn't think about how that data was used in any way. Learning about how the mega movie was gonna take all of these hundreds of thousands to possibly millions of pictures, stitching them all together to create a big movie on it, and then to use it for the science was amazing. I mean, there's really not another way to explain it. They most, for the most part, were already interested in the eclipse, but then the idea of not only witnessing the eclipse, but providing valuable scientific data in the form of their images, I think got many of them pumped up. We ask on, on the listserv, like, what, why did you sign up for this? And they're like, this is the coolest project, the most ambitious project I've ever heard of. Like, of course I'm gonna be part of this. I've been hearing on the news that this is gonna be the Super Bowl of the sky. The closer it gets, the more excited I'm getting. The thing that got me interested in the Mega Movie Project is I've been an astronomy nerd for almost 50 years since I was a little kid. And when I saw that there was a public citizen science initiative that I could participate in, um, I couldn't help myself. I jumped at that. Just recently, I've heard three volunteers say, I want the best shot. I want to give the scientists the best photograph that they can get from me. I'm far from being a scientist by any means, but if, if what I do can change even the smallest of things, I had to be a part of it. I mean, there was no question about that. I heard about the Mega Movie Project at our local astronomy meetup, and it just seemed like a, a really cool project to be a part of. One, because I was going to take pictures of the eclipse anyways. And two, this way I get to contribute my pictures to, to research and to something that's even bigger. So it all added up and here I am as part of the Mega Movie Project. I wanted to be more than just going out and, and shooting the eclipse, which hundreds of thousands of people are going to be doing. If I can contribute in any way, I think that's uh, fantastic. And I'm also learning a lot. You know, to hear the volunteers not only get what we're doing, but believe in us, it's just, yeah, I don't have words for it. The data we get will allow scientists to study the sun's atmosphere for years to come, helping them to understand motions in the corona, cyclical changes in temperature, and much, much more. What the mega movie does is it gives us basically more data that is of decent quality across the entire path. It will cover these kind of gaps that the professional community simply cannot cover. You see these gaps, meaning there's just no data there. That's what we're hoping to film with the mega movie. That's the beautiful thing about science. Like, it's about discovering.
Oh no! Oh, now the sun's the sun coming up right now. now. Up. Oh, that's pretty cool. Wow! Talk about good timing. Pretty cool so far. This is worth the trip. Yeah. And I guess by eclipse time, it's going to be up there. When you have something opportunistic like this happening, you have to just respond. And what I'm hoping is that we're going to capture a lot of data and see something unexpected. Good morning, everyone. It's a sunny day here in Du Bois, Wyoming, and that's what we want to see, of course. It's Japan stars for the crowd in the cloud, and it's about two hours to totality. So we're standing by for that. It's just a freak of nature, you know? The, the moon happens to be the right size compared to its place in the sky and the sun's place in the sky. The moon, 400 times smaller than the sun, but the sun being 400 times farther away makes them align just perfectly. Yet, that just seems to be a coincidence of nature, which I find absolutely fascinating. Yeah, people are starting to get excited. out of their chairs. Yeah, everyone's sort of standing now. And... Check it out. We are now at 10,000 likes. Where do we start? 70,000 at 10.56. It's really kind of a down-to-the-wire moment citizen science project. We're in a time frame, so there's a, there's a pinch where you're either going to hit or miss these three-second intervals of these events that are going to happen. Typically in a, a citizen science project, the volunteers can participate at their leisure. In this case, we have one moment in time, relatively few locations to collect the data, and then you have maybe two and a half minutes to get that data. And if you miss it, that's it. You've, you've blown it. Hey there, guys. Jeff Hainstars from The Crowd in the Cloud. We're live from Du Bois in Wyoming, and it's less than 10 minutes to totality. Pretty incredible. I mean, everybody's getting really, really excited because the, the whole atmosphere is changing. It's getting from being warm to being really chilly and cold. The wind is picking up. It's getting really dim, it's almost high noon, and yet it feels like it's dusk. I mean, it's really happening fast, too. And in just a couple minutes, it's gonna go totally dark. Wow! Oh, wow. wow! We oh are in God. the shadow of the that moon. That is crazy! Totality oh, from... Oh, This is what it's like to go through totality. That was oh, wow. truly amazing. Laura, did it live up to your expectations? It far exceeded my expectations, and they were so high. <laughs> what was the most amazing thing for you? Oh, I don't know, Shadow, the, the corona, to see it, to see it with my own eyes. I was like, oh, <laughs> it was just so amazing. We went for the adrenaline to wear off a little bit, and then we head back to the hotel and make sure that the uh, rest of the Mega Movie project is going well. Once they get their images, they need to get to a place where they can upload them online to the Mega Movie website as soon as possible. Then we have a uh, great uh, Google engineer, David, uh, in Mountain View, and he's uh, in charge of running an algorithm which will not only start to stitch these images together, but also um, flip them so that they're all at the uh, same orientation. And then they'll also be uh, arranged in time. So from location and time, because we want to capture the eclipse as it goes from Oregon to South Carolina. Who wants to watch? It's not truly a movie as if you're underneath the eclipse and, and taking a video, it, it's going to have a different feel. Imagine uh, an amazing flipbook with totality after totality after totality image, and what we're hoping to capture is changes in the sun's atmosphere from start to finish. Um, that just hasn't been possible before because we've never had this much access to uh, land-based areas where you get a good uh, photograph of it, and then also the ability to get it all in one place the cloud, if you will, as soon as possible like this. So it's, it's all very exciting. It's never been done before. This could be one of the most accessible eclipses ever. This one is kind of special in that respect, that a lot of people are able to look at this one. Those people uh, who are volunteering for the project really feel like they're making a difference in the world. And I think people are um, looking 
to add value to what they believe is precious here on Earth.